There's a lot of different free video editors out there for Windows, PC, and Mac. And if I'm being honest, there's really only one that I would recommend for a brand new beginner who's trying to learn video editing, and that's CapCut. And in this video, I'll be giving you a tutorial of the software showing you how to use it, so that way you can get started editing right away. Now, first things first, you're gonna need to download it. The easiest way is just to go to CapCut.com and whichever computer you're on, you'll see the download button here for it. Because I'm on Mac, I have download for Mac. If you're on Windows, they'll say download for Windows. So you can easily just download it. Once downloaded, you can go ahead and click new project, and then you'll be taken to the video editor. To get started, let's click import to add our video clips in. This is just gonna take you right to your files. For me in movies, I've got this clip right here that I want to use. So I'm going to click import and it's gonna add it right into my library here. If you need to add more clips, you always have the import button here, but I just need this one clip. Now, all we need to do to get started editing is to just drag our video clips into the timeline. And if you have more clips, you'll just drag them to the end. You can always just grab the clips and rearrange them too, but add all your video clips in, in order, and then we'll be ready to start editing. Now, what I like to do is zoom in by pinching on the trackpad because I like to edit to the audio bumps that are on this video. You can actually see the moments where there's nothing going on, there's no audio bumps, and the points when I'm talking where there are audio bumps. You can also just find the spot where you're about to talk by grabbing the white playhead here and just dragging it through and you can see all the points like me getting ready here. And I can see like probably right here is when I first start talking. And with that, let's cover the two different ways to edit your video. First, you can always grab a video clip on either side and just drag it to trim it all the way up to where you want. But I find this to be a little bit inaccurate. What's a much better way is to use the split and delete method. So what I do is I take the playhead and I line it up right where I'm about to start talking. And to help with that, I can use the uh, directional keys on my computer to slowly move it closer to where I'm about to start talking, which I'm, I'm pretty lined up here. And then what I like to do is click the split button, which is Command B on my MacBook. It should be Control B on a Windows PC, but I'm going to split the clip in half. So this is one clip, and now this is a separate clip, and then I'll just delete the beginning part here because this is you know, a whole point where I'm getting ready and stuff and there's nothing going on. So I can click delete. There we go. So now my video begins like this. Here are three tips to help you grow on YouTube. And then I'll pause and then I'll click Command B or split again. And then I will scroll to the next point where I start talking, which is like right there. Command B again or split. And now I can delete this empty space where nothing's going on. And so what I'm basically doing is, is I'm splitting at the different parts, you know, right when I start talking and I split right when I stop talking and then I delete out all the, the excess that's there, all the quiet moments where I'm thinking about what my next line is going to be. And so I'll just go through my edit and make all those changes. So there I stop talking and I'll just keep going through the whole edit doing this until all my uh, video clips are perfectly trimmed together. And there we go, we've trimmed all our video clips together, and now we can get into adding more things to make our content more interesting. Now we're probably gonna start at the top left bar here and work our way over through all these settings, and the first one here is audio, and while this one seems basic, there is some important stuff to know about the audio in CapCut, which is that a lot of the audio content inside of CapCut is copyrighted music. A lot of it's designed for TikTok, so if you go and you post it on YouTube, uh, which I've done, I have gotten copyright claims on my videos, which can get you into trouble on YouTube. So I don't recommend using the music that's built into CapCut. And if you're planning to take content creation seriously, you're going to need restriction-free music from somewhere. Epidemic Sound's been my go-to for years, and they're also the sponsor of this video. With Epidemic Sound, you get access to over 40,000 music tracks and over 90,000 sound effects that are safe to use anywhere online. Once you're signed up, it's really easy to connect your social media accounts, and then you're pretty much set to go. Finding music is as easy as choosing a genre or mood that you're going for in your video, and then filtering down the results even more to get the perfect fit. You can also use Epidemic Sound's pre-designed themes and playlists to help you find content in your niche, including my own playlist, so you can use some of the music that I use in my videos. Simply download the track, import it into CapCut, drag it into the timeline, and then with the audio selected, I like to go over to the volume and adjust the volume a bit just so it's a bit lower. 
uh, and is mainly background music for my talking video. You can also in CapCut do like a fade in and a fade out for your audio as well. So if you want it to slowly come in and slowly fade out at the end of the video, you can do that too. If you want to soundtrack your content, you can click my link in the description. This is something you can use not only in this editor, but in any paid editors that you get in the future as well. Now with our music added, let's get into our video settings. So if you click on a video, on the far right side, you're going to get all of your video settings. So some of the things here that might be important to explore uh, is for example, the scale. So if I increase this, I can actually crop in and zoom in on my video. So by just using this, I zoomed in and then I can just drag right on here to uh, move it in. So if you want to crop in, you can do that. You'll have some other things here like being able to rotate your video to change the opacity of your video, stabilization. And then there's also some other pro features if you get CapCut Pro that you can utilize as well. You can also go over to Cutout and in here you can do the remove background effect without a green screen. So if I do auto cutout and check this, it's going to process as you can see here. And now the background is removed from this video. Uh, so if I drag, as you can see, it is picking up a little bit and I, mean, I am sitting in a chair, so it's not the, the most perfect experience there. But for not having a green screen, this is actually doing a pretty good job. Next, you got mask, and this is something a little bit more advanced. Uh, if you wanna learn more about masking, I'll leave a, a link down below to a, a more uh, detailed tutorial on that. And then enhance is gonna be some stuff where you can do some like, uh, facial beauty stuff to your video as well. Now you also have your audio settings here. So you're gonna find like the volume, fade in, fade out, like we did with music. You'll also find voice changer here. If you wanna have some fun with this, you can actually change your, your voice in here. Next to audio is speed. So if you wanna speed up your video or slow it down, you're gonna have access to all that. And then the curve option is going to allow you to do like speed ramps where you can slow it down and then speed it up real fast. So. Um, that's also a, a fancier way to do speed effects. Next, you've got animation, and these are going to be in animation and out animation. So one that's really popular, uh, if we were to select the beginning of our video, is to do kind of like a zoom in right at the beginning. So maybe this zoom to, so if I click on this. Here are so that's basically the beginning of our video is this little zoom in effect. Here are three which some people do, I don't necessarily do it, but yeah. And you can choose the in animation, the out animation, and as well as a combo where it'll have kind of like both animations included. Clicking the arrow over, we have adjustment, and in here, we'll be able to adjust the color settings like increasing the saturation, or we can control the contrast to make it more contrasty. Um, we can increase the whiteness, the brightness, all those different things you'll be able to control in here. You also have HSL. So if you wanna select just the blue color, I can actually control the saturation for just the blue, affect the brightness of it. I can even uh, change the hue. So I could change like the color of my shirt there to be more purple. Um, and you can do that with all the colors as well. And then you'll also have some other things like curves and color wheels, which kind of, kind of is some more advanced color grading stuff that's built into here. And with the basics of video settings out of the way, let's move over to text. This is one you'll definitely use. There are some presets here, or you can always just do default. I'm actually gonna do this preset here because I like this yellow and black. I can drag it down here just by grabbing it in the, the preview screen. On the far right, I can change the text here. So YouTube tips for beginners, I think is kind of the style of this video I filmed. So I can easily type that in. Uh, if I want to adjust this more, I can change the color to something else. So maybe I do want it to just be white and keep it basic. And you'll find some other customization settings in there for text. Uh, but what's also important is the animation up here. So I can easily have an animation for my text to come in. So I can have it do a fade. I can choose the duration at the bottom here. So let's make it a little bit longer. So it just fades in. And I can also do an out animation. Maybe I want it to bounce out. I can do that as well. And then also along the lines of text is there is text to speech. Uh, so whatever text you type in, you can actually have an AI voice uh, read whatever you typed out aloud. Uh, so if I wanted to, I could do this Elfie, for example. YouTube tips for beginners. If I really wanted to add something like that, I'm not going to. Um, and then there is also AI characters, where if you want a literal AI person to read your video and the whole script and everything around it, you could actually 
add in these AI people into your video and they'll read whatever you type. Uh, so, which is really crazy and advanced, but all that's pretty cool just to have built into here. Um, what you also have access to under text is captions. You can click on auto captions, uh, choose the, the language you want it in and click create. And in a few seconds, you will get captions auto generated for you, which is actually being a little bit glitchy right now as it's stuck at 45%. And that's kind of the story of CapCut auto captions is it can be good if it is free, but it is also pretty glitchy. I can't even get them to generate right now on my computer. Um, and even if you do start to edit them and mess with them, they get glitchy. I personally have moved over to using Submagic for my captions for both my short form content and long form content. If you wanna check them out, I'll have a link down below and a coupon code uh, as I am an affiliate with them. So what I'll actually do is I'll create my video in CapCut or whatever editor I'm using, and then I will add it to Submagic, do all the captions in there and some of the other AI tools that they have that make videos more engaging, and then I'll actually export it out. So, but just so you know, you do have auto captions in here. Uh, hit or miss if they work, but yeah, that's that. Up next, you have stickers, and in here you'll find some uh, pre-designed stickers from CapCut that you can easily just uh, click on. So if I want this lightning bolt, I can just click on it um, and click the plus button, and here I can resize it and add it into my uh, project here. So they got some fun ones, different things you can add, like fire, money, uh, some other things are in here too. And then yes, you can apply animations to them so it can I could have the lightning bolt bounce in and bounce out and different things like that. Up next, you got effects. And in here, you're gonna find a whole bunch of different cool video effects. These are much more branded for TikTok, short form use, not necessarily long form. Uh, so depending what type of content you're making, you can kind of explore these, but uh, keep in mind, they're very much designed for like short form creators, not necessarily the, the long form content creation. Next, we've got transitions, and these are gonna be good transitions you can put in between your video clips if you are switching from one scene to another, uh, or from uh, A roll to B roll, and you're demonstrating clips, those can be really useful. You then have filters, which are pretty self-explanatory. You can easily uh, click on these to apply a filter to a video. Um, so I could add this in if I want, and it becomes a layer in our project that I can drag around and use. And then I can also control the strength of it on the far right side here to really adjust how powerful I really want that effect. Next, you have adjustments, and we already kind of explored this a bit. Um, if you want, you can apply a custom adjustment and drag this over the entire project. And then we can click on this and do color adjustments. And instead of going through each individual video and applying the adjustment video settings, I can just apply it to this adjustment layer and it'll cover the whole span of videos that are under it, which is kind of cool. And then after that, you do have templates and these are pre-designed templates, kind of designed for short form content, TikToks, etc. So you can explore these and uh, potentially use them if you want. Now, one thing that's not up here is overlays. So let me show you that real quick. If you want to add an overlay, and probably the best example is adding B-roll over your video, is when you have a video clip, you can easily drag it and place it on top of another video clip. So maybe I'm talking about video editing in this section. Because I placed it over the top when I click play, so here I am talking and then the video clip is gonna play and then it easily goes off. And with this, I can easily drag it, trim it, move it anywhere I want, um, which is really nice. And you can pretty much stack as many layers as you want inside this editor. Um, so if you want different B-roll or um, maybe, maybe you wanna do a gaming video. So you have your gaming video on the bottom and maybe this one's your reaction video. You can easily just drag this into the corner and make like a reaction type video. If you wanna add voiceovers to your project, there is this microphone right here where if we do click this, we're able to uh, record audio directly from our computer. I, or I can choose the input device if I have a microphone. So if you do want to voice over content uh, or voice over some of the videos you're recording, I can click record. It's gonna make it an audio file that I can uh, drag around and use. If you want to change your project from a long form video to a short form video, there is the ratio button. So if you click on this, I can easily switch it over to a nine by 16 and that has made it into a vertical video. The only downside is I do have to click on each clip and then go to scale and kind of resize it. Um, but other than that, you'll be able to change your project if you need to. Um, the main thing that will decide it though 
is the first clip that you add to your project. So if the first clip you add is a long form video, the whole project is gonna be set to long form. Whereas the first video you add is a short uh, or a vertical video, the whole project is going to be a vertical project. So whatever you're trying to make, make sure the first clip you add is in the right format that you want. But if you do end up making a mistake, you can always change that with that ratio button over here. Another useful button that I use is the back button. You will find that over here. Uh, so let's say I accidentally delete a clip. Um, I can always just click this back button or do Command Z or Control Z. Uh, and that'll reverse the action. This one's super useful for me as well. And probably another thing that you should know that's just not in the regular format of editing is just to go up to the help icon and click shortcut. And in here, you'll get a whole list of all the uh, keyboard shortcut commands that you can use. Um, so this is super helpful if you wanna be able to edit really fast. Now, once you're done editing, all you have to do is click the export button here and save it to your computer. And then you can go to YouTube or wherever to upload it. And if you think that's all the effects you can do inside of CapCut, you are wrong. There are so many more things you can do and cool effects to make your videos better. So be sure to click on this playlist right here. It's gonna walk you through even more advanced things that you can do. So that way you can become a pro at this editor. Uh, and that's gonna help you get started making the best video possible for your first video. So check that out there and I'll see you guys there.